Hi there, my name is Kyle Cockle and I am an application engineer with ANSYS. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at some improvements to TTK inside of SDK 12.7. To show some of these improvements, I have an example notional scenario here uh, where we have an F-35 uh, flying around and we have a radar system on board our F-35, which is going to be uh, gathering some tracking measurement data of 10 uh, cooperative aircraft in the vicinity. To start off, I'm going to talk about some of the statistical improvements to our TDK uh, graphing capability. The first one here is the ability to create a box and whisker plot to represent your data. Uh, so you can see here we're showing various different statistics related to that box and whisker. Uh, we have annotations directly drawn on the plot as well as a table here in the top right. And we can go ahead, we can move this table uh, through the uh, legend uh, button here at the top. We have the ability to show or hide uh, various different parts of those annotations. Uh, I should point out that you can also have multiple box and whisker plots in the same graph, uh, as well as you have the ability to orient those box and whiskers vertically rather than horizontally like I have here. The next new option we have within our graphs is the ability to create a histogram. So here I'm showing a histogram of the body aspect angle uh, of our F-35 relative one of, to one of our cooperative targets. We can see what the distribution of that uh, element looks like over time. And again, we're showing various different statistics, both drawn directly on the plot, as well as in a uh, movable table um, on top of the plot. And the last statistical improvement I will highlight is the ability to now add a linear regression line uh, on top of the plot of one element versus another. This is done through the annotation button. Uh, under curve, we have our quick linear option. So you can see here, uh, what that line would look like. And uh, in this case, I'm also displaying the R squared value or the correlation parameter to see how those two parameters uh, are correlated. All right, next I would like to move on to our tracks workflow. So we'll go ahead, I'll open up that panel. An improvement here that we've made is we now have the ability to assign a truth object directly to a track. So this is useful in cases where you want to uh, correlate or uncorrelate uh, particular track IDs relative to a uh, known truth object that you are trying to uh, assign that track ID to. Previously, to make changes like this, you would have had to utilize our track truth matching workflow, um, but now we're bringing that forward and allowing you to make some of those changes directly in the tracks workflow. So I'm going to key on this track ID 116. I'm going to go ahead, I'll zoom in, and let's turn on that track filter to track ID 116. So what you can see here is uh, obviously most of the track points are around aircraft one, but we do have this little section here right around aircraft 10. And so what's happening is these two aircraft are flying in the vicinity of each other. And our radar system is essentially mistagging aircraft 10 um, with track ID 116, which is meant for aircraft one. So to fix this, um, what we'll do is we'll go ahead, we'll assign our truth object here to our track ID 116. We're going to assign aircraft one. And now that I've done that, I can go ahead, I'm going to control click and draw in a box here around all of these uh, mistagged points. Uh, so now because I've assigned that truth object, you'll see here in my track pick info window that I have an additional toolbar here at the top. Uh, we use this convention, uh, naming convention, unname name. It's the same thing essentially as uncorrelate or correlate. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to unname all of those selected points. We'll see those turn to red X's. Uh, I could even go ahead, I could unshow those unnamed points. So now I quickly, um, just staying within the tracks workflow, I have now have a, a new track that's been correctly filtered down to just the track points that uh, should correlate with aircraft one. I can now move on to the track comparison workflow and uh, go ahead and assess how well that uh, radar system was tracking aircraft one. Next thing I'd like to highlight, I'll go ahead, I'll turn back on the set of tracks with all of the different track IDs. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to control, click out a box again, and I'm purposely going to select uh, track points where I know there's two different track IDs. So again, we're, we have our track ID 116 um, represented, and we also have track ID 1011 represented. Uh, so we do have the ability now to filter this track pick window by a particular track ID or set of track IDs. This little button down here at the bottom will show you all of the unique track IDs. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to copy that 116 value, and I'm going to apply that here in my field, and I'm going to select filter by that track ID. So what that does is it's now going to filter my table up above and just show me the points where um, I have a track ID of 116. 
I can now continue on and utilize um, some of the existing animation buttons down here. And I can now quickly uh, step through a unique track ID uh, within you know, an overall track where there's multiple track IDs represented. Uh, lastly, we've made some improvements uh, just overall to um, our track caching. So that uh, now it allows us to uh, both visualize and do some analysis with tracks a little bit quicker. All right, that's it for the improvements to TDK in 12.7. Uh, be sure to check out our website for the full list of additional improvements. Thank you.